Joining us to, for this topic is Adan Days, celebrated artist and speaker whose work spans illustration, animation, advertising, and comics. Color theory includes the fundamental application of color to support your storytelling. Your choice of color can support everything from world building and costume design to the mood and art direction of your entire series. Color can be a complicated topic. Thankfully, Adan will help us break it down. Adan describes himself as a light catcher storyteller and relies on light and color to support his work across different industries. He's been a guest speaker at universities, ed educating other students, and is joining us today to share his insights on color and how to use it intentionally for your Webtoon series. Please join me in welcoming Adan for this workshop. Hey, how's it going? So today I want to talk about color theory for storytelling. It's a super huge topic. It's pretty pretty immense to cover in, in to cover the, the whole thing in about an hour, but I'll try my best. So first of all, who am I? Uh, my name is Adan Diaz de Leon, usually known as Adan Days or Atrapalus. I'm 31 years old and I'm from Mexico City. I studied animation and digital arts at Tecno Monterrey in Mexico. As Kirsten said, I'm an illustrator, animator, uh, and visual storyteller here living in Mexico City. I freelanced illustration and animation for six years. And currently I'm working on, in a sports digital media agency uh, as, a, as director and innovation illustrator and animator. Uh, it's been for four years now. Um, my hobbies are sports, drawing, uh, music, movies, comics, and I'm recently starting to, to, to learn how to, to make tattoos. So color is a pretty, pretty complicated topic, but, uh, and it can be scary too. Like when I first started, um, uh, making illustrations that I was just so frightened about using color because I didn't know how. Uh, I, I feel more comfortable uh, using like black and white, but I forced myself to learn about color uh, besides the things I, I learned in, uh, at college. So uh, color and why it matters. Uh, we need to understand color to, to understand how humans, we as humans perceive it, uh, to understand how colors mix, match and contrast with each other, and to use this information as a tool to communicate better and strengthen our story. It's pretty common that, that a lot of people just put, throw in the color just like, oh, okay, the, the tree is green, so let's paint green, you know, and that's it. But if you start experimenting with color and with light, you can use it as a, a, a pretty strong uh, storytelling tool. So here are two examples of the same image and how color can change the whole narrative of it. Like this was an illustration I made in a workshop. It was for a fake cover of Fantastic Mr. Fox, the book by Roald Dahl. This was my interpretation of it. I, I liked like the, the one color palette with different tones of, of red, but I felt like it became a little bit confusing. Although I used like uh, harsh shadows and stuff. And after trying to throw in some, some color, some different colors, it changed completely the idea. Like instantly I get to to identify the, the shapes better, the characters better. And also I, I think I feel the, the kind of, of character each one is just because of the color and the intensity and the, and the saturations and stuff like that. So we'll just jump into color theory 101. And I think some of you, or maybe all of you know the basics. I just want to cover them uh, again, in case you, you don't know them, we start with the, with the famous color wheel, primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. Uh, the primary colors uh, were, th were thought this way because you cannot get these three colors by mixing any other colors. But with these colors, you can get all the other colors in the, in the palette. So these are red, blue, and yellow. Then what happens if we mix blue and yellow? we get, or if we mix red and yellow, we get orange. And if we mix blue and red, you get purple. Honestly, uh, for all this thing about color theory, this kind of rules uh, are not actually rules. Like these things are just intuitive. So the only things I know by heart maybe is this thing, like the color wheel and, and, and the logic of it. Like if I mix this one with this one, I get this one, that's it and maybe just like the complementary colors uh, 
that's the only thing I, I know by heart. So don't get too worried about learning all of this and, and memorizing it because it, it, it doesn't work like that. Uh, and it's not helpful at all just to, to memorize it. So the tertiary colors are the mix of one secondary color and one primary color just to get like to fill in the gaps. I mean, and if we wanted to try to to fill maybe the the gaps in the where the black lines are, we just have to to mix those those adjacent colors. OK, uh, it was easier for me to understand how to use color by understanding that light is color and color is light. OK. And it's not the same thing to to pick a random color that you can do that, but I strongly suggest that you understand or dissect the colors in these three main properties that are hue, saturation, and value. If you have that, I think all of you or most of you have used some of these um, digital tools like Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint or whatnot, you see this kind of bar, uh, and you can set it up like. RGB or CMYK or HSV. I strongly recommend to use this setting, and this is why, because you you have control and like conscious control about the color you want. So the first one, H, stands for hue. What is hue? Is what we commonly refer to when we say uh, color in its purest form. Let's say red, uh, purple, yellow, green. Okay. That's the hue, but then that's not all of it. We we have saturation. Saturation. What saturation? It's the dominance or intensity of a color. So you see that in the bar we have from white to the most saturated color that would be like pure red if you want to call it like that. So in between we have like this tones we call it. There is. Uh, less amount of pigment if you want to think it like that way. Okay, so if you want it to be super vivid, you are you have to saturate more. If you want it to be a little bit more sober, you have to to take out some saturation or, or desaturate it. And and the last one is B for brightness or value. Basically, like just adding black or white just to to give the to to make it more brighter or darker okay and these are called shades in this specific bar that we have for digital purposes on the saturation bar we have like if you you were adding white and in the in the brightness bar is when you add black okay and it's not it's actually not the same you you can play within and with these three bars you have all i think all the colors you can get okay it's pretty good to to start thinking like and observing the, the colors that surround you and also the lighting and try to guess like or, or this is a good exercise just to, to see something and if you are in the computer just try to to match the color okay just by playing with these three bars not not with the with the whole box that you just like pick the random color okay now uh, there's another thing that we must understand and learn RGB is essentially mixing light. Light beams have color, and if you mix them all together, it becomes white, okay? So here it is, like red, green, and blue is the added color model of the light waves. This means the more color you add, the closer you get to white. This is, you start from darkness, and as long as you start putting in some light beams or light lighted color beams, you'll get to white, okay? And this is used for screens. And then the subtractive is the other way around. You start from from white. And it's used for printing because it's, it's, it's purely logical. It's used for printing because we mostly print on white paper. In order to get to black, you have to switch it. And you have to paste like each ink on top of the other until you get to black. OK? So the first one is. All together, you come to white because it's light. And here, all together, you, you get black because it's ink. That's it. <laughs> OK, so another topic I wanted to, to talk about is the meaning of color, what certain colors mean and the emotional symbolism they carry. There's a little disclaimer here that, or a reminder, that the psychological and emotional perception of color can be subjective 
and can differ between different cultures. These are not definitive, not, not absolute, but they tend to, to lead us to that uh, understanding of color, okay? Uh, so we'll get through every meaning of the, of the basic colors, but honestly, they all can change between cultures. Like for me in Mexico, uh, orange, is, uh, it reminds me of Via de Muertos and of uh, some Sempasuchil flowers, okay? But maybe in in United States, it reminds you of something joyful or something cheerful, okay? It can be very subjective, okay? So we we'll start with red. And uh, for this topic specifically, specifically, I'd, I'd love to share with you the the work of, of an artist I, I love and admire so much. It's called Pascal Campion. And I love how he uses actually color to tell a story. He uses the, the, the color so well that he doesn't even have to get into details or, or inking. It's pretty, even like a concept art. So you'll see. So red is mostly or commonly uh, related with power, passion, energy, and can help encourage action. Also, red is a very powerful, powerful color. So you have to use it wisely because red tends to track the tension so quickly more than any other color. So here we see that uh, the lighting is beautiful, but we have this big shape, big red shape that is the code. And also we have another another red dot that even gets lost that is the, the traffic light just because the, the strength of the of the of the red shape is so powerful, even close our eyes and this guy's eye. Then um, orange, as I was saying, is used for joy and enthusiasm, like upbeat. It, it generally relates to, to things, positivism. So here we have this beautiful scene and sunset, a father and son and a dog going for fishing, I guess. I don't know. But you instantly see the mood. These are pretty well picked uh, images uh, based around the, the, the color we, we're looking. Now, uh, yellow, happiness or intellect. It, it tends to, to relate to, to things that, that feel like joyful, bright, also related with the sun, although the, the sun is actually, well, its light is uh, white, not yellow. Then green, like th this, these relationships we, we make with psychological, like psychological and emotional relationships with color are actually pretty easy to, to get, like, Honestly, you just have to look at a picture like this and list like three or, or five things you feel when you see the picture and there you have it. Like life, obviously, because it's our primal instinct that trees and grass and nature is mostly green. So that's why we recall green and relate it with, with, um, with nature and life. Blue, it can be with tranquility, confidence, lighter shades of blue, provide a sense of peace also because we're related to the sky and the clouds and stuff and darker colors are more confident and serious there you have it another beautiful painting by, by pascal campion <laughs> and purple it can be related to magic or luxury or creativity here it was a pretty hard one to find but but I love this one because I think the easy way out to color this scene was to to paint it maybe orange and that's it, like uh, on a sunset and uh, and a couple looking at each other. The the choice of taking and painting it uh, purple gives another another whole mood. It feels like something's happening here between the two of them. Maybe want to be romantic, but maybe it's, they're used to it. Okay. There's so much it, it can say with just, or, or it can tell just by the, by the colors. Here, black is darkness, power, elegance, and mystery. And although this picture specifically has more shades of blue, I think it gives the idea of high contrast, mostly dark, and stays elegant and mysterious also. And white is purity, safety, innocence, holiness, maybe. Like when I was looking for this picture, I wasn't sure if I was going to uh, find one because how do you paint a whole thing with white? But yeah, he can do that. So here are some tips and tricks for using color as a storytelling tool. I strongly suggest that we understand uh, 
and acknowledge the natural color of the objects and the color of the light too. And we're going to use this little magic toad, wizard toad, to, to explain it. Uh, so his natural color is uh, two or three shades of green, uh, his purple hat uh, and the green leaf underneath. The eyes are a little bit yellow and the, the tongue is pink. That's it. No influence of light or shadows, OK? Then what happens when we add light? And what color is the light? We have to remind ourselves that sunlight is white, not yellow. And the highlights and the shadows that are cast when we throw in some light uh, are the mix of the color of the light plus the color of the, the natural color of the object and the, the color of the surface if it bounces. Because we have to remind ourselves that light, like when it's omnidirectional light, there are like straight arrows going all different directions. Shadow always comes on the opposite side of the, of the light source, okay? And if you don't know if light will reach some point or not, just imagine a straight arrow and if it goes or if it, it doesn't, okay? Because of the shape too. So here it is with shadows, here it is with light, and here it is with a little rim that I like to add. Uh, when I'm illustrating on, uh, on digital, I, I love to to use uh, the blending modes in order to to get more accurate colors. So here, for the white light, for the shadows, I used like maybe a tone of gray, uh, and I used multiply one of the of the blending modes, and for the light, I used pure white with overlay. I, I like to, to use overlay or maybe um, color dodge for, for rim lights when it's more intense. And here's what happens when you, we change the color of the light. You see, also I changed the color of the shadow too. Let's turn it now to blue and see what happens, okay? And it gives a certain mood. It changes completely, okay? So you have to think about the color of the light too. And also materials of the object, if they're translucent, if they're reflective, or whatnot. Like this is what my this was my attempt at making it more slimy, but it was like I think the graphic style didn't uh, give me too much too much room to play. The second thing is uh, you have to be aware and try at at all costs and all times, especially when you're developing your series and your comic series. Uh, to guide the eye, you are the storytellers. You have to to tell us your story the way you wanted us to read it. So there are a lot of tools to help you do this: uh, composition, lighting, and color. Okay, here is a a little frame of one of of one short film I I made like four or five years ago. Uh, as you can see. Like, I, I don't know if you were self-aware at that moment when, when I first showed the image, but uh, surely your eyes went like straight into the middle and then instantly went looking for, for the eyes of the character or the character, but you didn't see so much of the details in the shadow part. That's totally on purpose. It's not only the, 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 um, the composition, but also the, the colors and the lighting of the scene that is helping me guide the eye to where I want you to uh, to look. And also, like guiding the eye, you, you can use like blurry effects or, or intense colors uh, opposed to uh, more uh, desaturated colors. Also expressions, humans tend to to look for for the eyes of other humans. That's primal instinct. So, so here, as you can see, there are a lot of broken things all over the floor and it's pretty messy for the eyes. So what I instantly want to, to make, even unconsciously, is to, to, to look for the, for the clear, like for, for the emptiest area. And also, that's why the, the door is red. That's why, in contrast, he is wearing this green sweater, because those are complementary colors, OK? And also because the shadow, like I know that when you open the door, like this light beam will be shaped as the as the door, but I like high contrast and I like I, I didn't want the people to 
to see anything else than this destruction and his expression. Now, uh, color also can help us set a mood. We should seek to 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 make this on purpose at all times, okay? Especially if we are telling a story. So using different different colored lights, you can not only show the time of the day, but set a complete mood that reinforces the moment of the story you're trying to tell. Here is a uh, super basic illustration of a bird I saw the other day uh, standing in, in uh, on an antenna. I honestly, I have to say, if this wasn't actually the scene or the or the colors I was uh, seeing back then, but I thought that it would be more magical. I uh, painted it like a sunset, like the stars are start showing up, starting to show up. But what happens if I start playing with with the colors? I can make this this scene that feels more like uh, maybe noon. It feels kind of weird for me because it's too bright. Like uh, maybe I even should have uh, changed the the um, the composition or something or the, the camera angle. If I were to if I was to to make this specific illustration for this time of day, but as you can see, it's a totally different. And then what happens if I turn everything red? including obviously the shadows and the highlights it feels like a super dark scene like maybe this bird has is, is seeing some destruction underneath and he's saving himself looking at it at the horizon like i love this scene like i think even more than that the original one <laughs> and yeah i also changed like the the a little bit of the contrast of the of the light of, i mean of the sky and it also feels like there's smoke. And this simple plain image is telling me already a story just because of the colors, okay? I think it's a, a, a pretty good and pretty elegant way of storytelling just to, to not show everything away at once, you know? Just keep hearing, like, you're the master of, you're the masters of, of, of your story. So you, the, the way you tell it is the, it's, the essence and it's what what makes your story better so this is one of the best resources you have like setting mood with light color now another thing i really suggest for doing uh, especially when you're planning or or, or on pre-production stage of your of your series is to make a color script or color keys this helps you plan your color mood throughout the story. I don't know if you guys have seen, but I think you have um, some of the the art books of of animation movies or or stuff like that. Like uh, the art of any given movie. There you have some of these. What they do, and and let me show you, because I made this for my for my uh, animated short film. And honestly, I like I didn't know how to do it, but I read a lot of those books. Like if you can see uh, behind me, I have a lot of uh, of art books, and I thought some some person came up with this idea, and it was just natural, like a natural step. So I can figure it out. Like it should be logical, right? So what the color script is is this thing on top, like these uh, colored bars. It helps you to see your whole story in color to define also the colors and not just start coloring right away. To plan and, and link the moods of your story with specific colors and to play with saturation and value to emphasize emotion, emotional plot points of your story. So what I did was I have my script and then I identified the, the main plot points or emotional changes in the story for my main character, okay? And then what I did was uh, place them in, a, in like this graph uh, being the middle, like the 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 start point, and then if he goes happier or or closer to his goal, he will go up. And then if something bumps him or sends him down or or makes him feel sad or or discouraged, it will it will go down. After that, I define which curves I wanted for certain uh, situations. So in this short film, I decided that. The happiest moments for him would be yellow, golden. And the saddest moments would be 
maybe green, turquoise, something like that. That's what I defined. Like the, the easy way was to, to pick maybe purple that is the complementary of yellow and say, oh, okay, so sad is purple. But I didn't feel like, like because this, this uh, short film was for a music video too. So the thing is it had to, to go also with the emotional um, pace of the, of the song. So I didn't feel like purple was a sad color for this short film. So that's why I picked uh, turquoise and then uh, purple and and pink I use them for special changing moments like for when my character is going to change or have this transformation in the story that's what I throw in some purple or, or pink that was my main skin and then I just started filling in the blanks with closer colors you know like maybe if he's yeah, it's a little bit happier than uh, at the beginning, but not that happy. Maybe I can go with some green. Also, it has to do with, with the environment he's in. So it's kind of balancing back and forth. Um, and also, I love to get it more saturated colors if he was happier and desaturate the whole scene if he was like in his, low, in his dark, darkest hour. So, and like the top, the top bars are the color script. And then the translation to color keys are simply taking some thumbnails or some uh, storyboard frames and throwing some really rough colors, really concept uh, like blocks of color just to give the mood. The intention of the color keys is just to watch it from afar, just to give, and maybe even like squint a little, like just, make blurry vision just to get the feeling of how the color is evolving throughout your story. So I strongly recommend you do this because then you'll have the color on your side for the whole story, like supporting your storytelling. Now, color schemes. This is another tool that is a little bit more, more technical. And I honestly have to say that I'm no specialist on creating color schemes. I know how to use them. I know how to get them, like all that stuff, but I just don't really feel that comfortable yet using color schemes, but it's a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, good tool when you want uh, some limited color palette, okay? So color schemes essentially are the color combinations that work together well. And there are a lot of web pages on the internet that help you this color picking easy for you. For this topic, I'd love to share with you some of the of the work by this Argentinian um, illustrator called Gaston Pacheco. I love how he he uses color so so intelligent that he doesn't even have to to give um, some realistic shading or lighting. You know, he just picks perfect colors, four or five colors, and that's it. So, with him and his work, we'll show um, the several color schemes that that we know. So the first one is monochromatic schemes. Monochromatic is mono, single, chromatic color, okay? One color using all the tints and shades it can produce. Here is an illustration by Gaston Pacheco with pretty much all reds, okay? Even using it for, for outline. Like, personally, I feel more comfortable using black outline because I love high contrast, but I I truly would love to to be able to to use color so well to feel confident with with this type of outlines and, and coloring. Like, I love detail, so I, I'd love to, to shade almost all the parts uh, there of this um, Akira <laughs> uh, fan art. Then, analogous. This is formed by pairing one main color with two colors directly next to each other in the color wheel. As you can see here, like, I have two color wheels. The first one is like plain and simple that should that, that's the essence of of the of the theory of the color scheme and and the the right one is the actual color scheme of this image and underneath it's the color scheme like the five colors extracted from the from the image so as you can see it's pretty close purples a little bit of of, of pinks and starting to get into oranges and that's it okay but 
it this helps like when you want to set a very very specific mood that um, involves the whole scene then complementary based on the use of two colors directly across from each other on the color wheel and relevant tints of those colors so that's what I, what I was telling you earlier that you should memorize the, the complementary of red is green, purple, yellow, blue, orange. Okay. Um, I think this, this scheme works better with illustration, but also I think it's a visual collision. So it's pretty strong. You should use this scheme uh, very carefully. And especially if you're using it for a series, like maybe just in important points of the story. Then the split complementary is formed by one dominant color and two two colors directly adjacent and dominant col uh, to the dominant colors complement. Okay, this is very simple. You can see that in with this beautiful cat, the the main color is blue, and the dominant color is blue. Or also, in second place would be the orange, and third place maybe yellow. And you can see also in the in the color wheel extraction of this illustration that it works almost perfectly. Then this is the triadic scheme that is created by choosing three colors that are equally placed in lines around the color wheel, equidistant, okay? You get something like this. You don't have to use the, the full color, the super saturated color. It means like if you're going to pick uh, maybe some red, then you you have all the, all the tints and shades of, of red. And that counts as triadic too. Like that, that counts as red. Another one counts as, as blue. Another as yellow. Okay. And finally, the tetradic and square uh, scheme. It's created by four colors. It can be like that, like in a rectangle shape or square shape. And you get something like this. Like the, the idea of this scheme is just to get mm, the same amount and same uh, weight of colors. So that no, there's no clear dominance of one, uh, of just one color. So I think he even consciously or unconsciously chose this this type of scheme because of the weirdness of the of the character too. Like he wants to to make it more disruptive. I don't know. That that was just a, a wild guess, I think. And then I want just to to give some final notes and tips. Think of color uh, as a tool also to stop the eye to annoy this primal instinct. And what I was telling you, or, or what I referred to about, uh, when, when I say primal instinct is, I expect, as a viewer, I expect to, to see a, a tree that is green, okay? So if I'm maybe scrolling and I see a tree that is green, it won't pop, it won't pop out. It will be like, okay, yeah, because trees are supposed to be green, be brown, okay? But, but you have the power to change that. So if you show me, suddenly um, a tree that is purple and, and yellow, I'll stop and I'll say like, wait a minute, is that a tree? Even though it, like that's unconscious, okay? And by this, I don't mean that you should use flashy colors all the way, no. But this is a, a pretty, pretty interest, interesting tool to get the attention when you want and, to, and, and guide the eye to where you want. Second uh, advice is observe, observe, observe your surroundings and ana analyze how light interacts with objects, materials, and colors. The way I, uh, I learned how to color and how to light a scene or an illustration was by observing, analyzing, and, and literally just playing with my desk lamp and throwing it uh, on top of a, of a glass or or something in different directions. That was like the way I learned. Another thing, um, well, I have this course recommendation. There is an online course. It's called Painting with Light and Color by Robert Kondo and Daisy Sumi. This, this course also helped me a lot to understand light, like how light works and how to portray light in illustration and for storytelling purposes too. So I strongly recommend it. And finally, I just I just suggest that you experiment a lot. Don't get married with, with just one style. Like just because you're doing it, it's already your style. And also the things that you bring with you, those are the things that make you unique. Okay. I mean, I grew up with my sister and 
and we grew up in, in the same in the same house and we have different styles at all like super different styles so that's because each one of us has its own personal mythology its own personal experiences and the more personal things you take from you and throw into your work the more original it would be because no one grew up like you not even your sisters not even your siblings okay so you have already what you need to tell the best story you have you are the best person to uh, capable to tell your story because it's your story okay no one can tell it better than you can tell it different but not better so don't be afraid to experiment don't be afraid to try new new things new ways watch a lot of movies watch a lot of um, of animation uh read a lot of comics and the difference between reading for entertainment and fun and reading as a professional or watching as a professional is that when you're a professional you you are analyzing every time okay like i i cannot see a movie like i cannot watch a movie now and and not think about color about uh composition storytelling plots a script the characters I, i'm always thinking about that and i find it amusing okay so also if you want to to steal things from other artists but still wisely like just pick identify what you want what, what you like i mean what you like about that are just one or two things and take it and then from another artist take those and mix them you're the link between your tastes and your uh, and your likes okay so this makes a new composition that would be original and that's the way it is and finally have fun and here are some artists i i suggest you you follow regarding color i admired each and every one of these artists some i some of them i know them some of them i don't but i love to and analyze how they use color and try different things okay try 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 experiment and that's it then that's me as a kid growing <laughs> That was amazing, Don. Thank you so much. We really appreciated these insights. There is one question I want to ask before I let you go. There was a great question that popped up in chat about color keys um, and choosing which yeah. color scheme to use. So how do you intentionally choose what kind of color scheme you're applying to a scene or a story when you have so many options available? Yeah, like I'll say that uh, you just go from general to particular, like so if you let's say if you want uh, a scene that is very intense then that's that's the, the most general way to to start no so you'll pick maybe a red okay and then you can try okay maybe i'll go with a monochrom monochromatic scheme maybe just for this scene or maybe for this whole sequence i don't know but just that that's why you make it in pre-production because you you help your your future self some you're saving yourself from trouble in the future so you can play a lot with colors uh, when you're at, at the thumbnail phase so you can throw in some reds and try like maybe you, you make some shades of grays along your sequence and then paint it all like with a red filter and see how it works do you like the monochromatic scheme or not okay no very plain okay then maybe just this scene or maybe throw in another color, just as intense. Maybe uh, if there's fire, you should throw in or either orange or yellow and, and try it again. Like, I think that's the way to go in, uh, when regarding like picking color schemes. J just pick one or two of your main colors and then fill in with the other ones that, that, that work with you well. Also with your environment and your characters and, and, and everything. That's a great tip, especially starting at the thumbnail stage, figuring that out yeah. so early. Um, thank you so much. All right, there's another comment that I think sums it up for all of us. I thought I knew color theory, but I guess I still had a lot to learn. Thank you. <laughs> I we all the do, same we way. all do. Yeah, so thank yeah. you for today, Adon. Very yeah, much appreciated. You.